is a surprisingly simple innovation in healthcare that saved over a thousand lives and hundred and seventy five million dollars in Michigan. It's not a drug or a new surgical technique. It's a process, but its leading proponent is concerned that it will never come into common use. Welcome to Collateral. And as a result now, we have a country that's told every night on the nightly news, because that's where, right, virtually all the ads on the nightly news are pharmaceutical ads. They're being told to take this pill, that pill, whatever, all, all meant to line the pockets of, of the Halliburtons of the pharmaceutical industry. The December 10th edition of The New Yorker recounted the story of The Checklist. Dr. Peter Pronovo's simple, yet devastatingly effective remedy to the dangers posed by the complexities of practicing medicine in the intensive care unit. What Pronovost realized was that when a simple, thorough series of steps were followed, every time critical care was administered, opportunistic diseases, like Lyme infections, could be reduced dramatically and in some cases eliminated completely. The checklist is made up of things that doctors should do anyway, such as washing their hands properly and wearing sterile masks and hats. Think of it as a checklist that a pilot uses before takeoff. Hands washed, check. Sterile hat, check. Sterile mask, check. These are simple things, but they're often overlooked in the crush of ICU time pressures. In 2004, Pronovost tested his checklist at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Maryland and later at ICUs in Michigan. The results were clear and unmistakable. When his list of steps were followed in their entirety, the rate of infection dropped precipitously, sometimes to zero. In the ICU, this can be the difference between life and death. In the 18-month period during which the findings were published in the New England Journal of Medicine, an estimated 1,500 lives and $175 million were saved. These results have been sustained over four years. Medical professionals in Spain were so impressed they plan on implementing the checklist nationwide. So why does Provenos believe that there is, and will continue to be, such opposition to checklists in the U.S.? In a word, tradition. Checklists are felt by some medical professionals to encroach on the doctor's exclusive domain. They feel insulted and put upon. After all, the checklist represents yet another thing to do in a field where the amount of paperwork has gotten notoriously out of control. From this perspective, the objection seems understandable. Yet there is a sad irony in all of this. The checklist is far less onerous than the everyday encroachments on medicine by big pharmaceuticals and HMOs. Over the course of 35 years, these encroachments have stripped doctors of the control that they used to enjoy when treating their patients according to what their patients needed, not what the insurance covered. The time to get upset about these encroachments was a long time ago because those encroachments were done not in the name of improving health care, but rather in the name of private profit. The checklist won't make big money for any drug company, but if it's implemented as widely as needed, it could represent billions in savings to HMOs and insurance carriers every year. Surely that's something that the money managers and bean counters can get behind. What Pronovost has shown us is how a system can have effects that undermine the efforts of highly trained experts. The solution to this problem is often not more expertise, but something far easier and simpler to deliver. Careful attention to detail. The checklist appears to save lives. Doctors and healthcare providers need to accept it. See you next week.